The coronavirus outbreak is still spreading around the world with Iran confirming its first two cases overnight. And there is new attention on the outbreak aboard a cruise ship docked in Japan. 79 more cases were confirmed on the Diamond Princess this morning, bringing the total there to at least 621. At the same time, about 500 passengers who tested negative were allowed to leave that ship at the end of a two-week quarantine. And here in the U.S., more than 300 Americans evacuated from China have been released from their quarantine. Several hundred others who returned more recently from China and Japan remain under observation around the country. Chief medical correspondent Dr. John LaPook has been at the front lines covering other infectious disease emergencies all around the world. John joins us now. John, good morning. So what lessons can we learn from these prior cases to protect Americans now? Well, you know, with another virus from overseas impacting America, public health officials are trying to stay one step ahead, learning from mistakes made during past outbreaks. Officials covered up the number of SARS cases in the city. Does the public understand what Zika is, how it spread, how to protect themselves? I don't think so. We have to rethink Ebola infection control. When a deadly virus arrives in the U.S., health officials follow a roadmap and try to anticipate the detours that can put the public at risk. They don't always succeed. When Ebola came to America, two nurses caring for a patient in Dallas contracted the disease. Officials believe gaps in protective equipment and unclear guidelines for properly using it were to blame. We realized here in the United States that we needed to enhance preparedness in hospitals. He is still stable. Dr. Angela Hewlett helped treat three Ebola patients at Nebraska Medicine. One of the lessons from the Ebola outbreak was that every hospital was not prepared. Do you think that's changed now? I do think that that has changed, especially since the inception of the National Ebola Training and Education Center. That training center now holds regular drills using protocols strengthened after Ebola. Hospital workers from across the country practice putting on and taking off protective gear exactly the right way. Ebola also highlighted the need for a dedicated facility for patients showing symptoms of infections that are especially contagious and lethal. This brand new national quarantine center is now monitoring 12 Americans evacuated from China. What happens behind closed doors? That could be everything from, you know, ensuring that we have the, uh, the right care providers, and making sure that we have enough protective equipment. With shortages in China of medical supplies and concerns about the worldwide supply of drugs, the CDC has already loaded up on vital items such as medicines, IVs, vaccines and ventilators. Our 60 Minutes team visited one of the strategic national stockpiles at a secret location during the Zika outbreak. In 2016, health officials struggled to get the word out to women that Zika infection during pregnancy could cause babies to be born with severe brain damage. This time, tech companies and the World Health Organization are collaborating to put reputable health resources as the top search result for coronavirus in an effort to filter out misinformation. We're seeing a lot of coronavirus mythology. Dr. Julie Gerberdine was director of the CDC during the SARS outbreak, when China's lack of transparency may have cost lives. She says that example is shaping how officials are sharing information about the coronavirus. One of the most important lessons in any public health situation is communicate. People crave information, and if the CDC isn't providing it, someone else will. Dr. Gerberding, who now works at pharmaceutical giant Merck, says that while public health experts look to high-tech solutions in the lab to fight the coronavirus, they've also learned that protecting the public starts with a low-tech approach. We have disease detectives who are going out and interviewing patients, interviewing their contacts, really trying to tease out clue by clue how did they get exposed and how fast is it spreading. And there have been a lot of lessons learned, right, from SARS and from Zika and H1N1 and Ebola. We have had more practice than we hoped for, but each time we have an outbreak, it does strengthen at least some part of the system, and over time, it's getting better and better. The experts we spoke to are especially confident about one thing, that viruses are unpredictable, and we have to be flexible enough to deal with the unexpected. Right now, the risk to Americans is relatively low, but this is a fluid situation that can change, and public health officials are looking every day for changes that could require new approaches. Yeah, it's that fluid situation that's so yeah. scary because yeah. you keep hearing about people being released and then being diagnosed after they're released. 
Right, but, but still right said, now in the United States, 15 cases yeah. right, that yeah. were affected here. Yeah, so we should keep that in perspective. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I worry about is that there's, you're seeing fear out of proportion to the facts, yeah. right? Yeah. So, for example, you're seeing people, uh, Asians, uh, who are being targeted. There's yeah. prejudice against them. And that reminds me of exactly what happened doing, during Ebola mm. when people from Africa yeah. uh, experienced the same sort of targeting. So Keep it in perspective. Thank you, Dr. John LaPoop. Always good to have you at the table.